Hi, this is the Democratic Alliance Labour Report. Thank you for tuning in. It's really appreciated. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of May, 2023. And thank you for coming on board and sharing this with all and sundry. And thank you very much. In essence, what I want to do is to look back a little bit at the trade union movement. We've just celebrated Workers' Day on the 1st of May, 2023. And I thought it would be important for us to have a look at some of the illustrious history of our trade unions in South Africa, have a look at where we've come from, have a look at the present day and where we should be going to in the future. And in particular, having a look at the role the unions might play uh, in the elections in 2024, uh, where we're going to get a new government in South Africa. It will clearly be a brand new government in South Africa, and we need to look this through. So it's Michael Bagram. I'm the Democratic Alliance Labour spokesperson. I'm an MP, and my portfolio is employment and labour. So thank you for listening. In essence, I was rereading a speech that was made by Zuelen Zima Vavi um, at the 40th anniversary of the South African Labour Bulletin. Um, at, it was in 2014. Uh, Vavi, you will recall, at that stage was the head of Kasatu, and he's called his talk, and I put this in inverted commas, is Labour at a turning point? This was 2014. Um, and where we're standing now in 2023 and on the cusp of a very, very important election, uh, the Democratic Alliance has called this the moonshot election, where the Democratic Alliance is making plans uh, and to govern uh, South Africa straight after that election uh, as part of our moonshot pact uh, that is put together by the, uh, the leaders of the opposition parties. Um, this moonshot election uh, should be coming up in about June, July, August in uh, 24. So we effectively just got over a year before this happens. And we need to look at it from a labor point of view as to what is best for labor in South Africa, what is best for the trade union movement, and to see where we're going from here. Now, there is that illustrious history that we've had um, and we can, we can sing praises to Kosovo to, uh, to bringing the apartheid government to its knees. And I, I strongly believe that. As a Democratic Alliance MP, I strongly believe that Kosovo uh, had a very good hand, uh, a powerful hand, in bringing the fascist nationalist government to its knees. And I thank them. Uh, I thank them for our freedom that we have today. And certainly in celebrating uh, Workers' Day on the 1st of May, I, I personally uh, sent out a prayer of thanks to Kosatu for the value that it put in to ensuring that we now have a democratic South Africa uh, today. But we need to have a look not only at that history, but where we are today, and we need to have a look at where we're going in the future. So it's Michael Bagram. I'm a, spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. I'm an MP and Member of Parliament for the Democratic Alliance and I have a history in working with the trade union movement um, through the industrial relations in South Africa for the last 40 years and I feel that um, I need to have a say as to where we're going and why I believe the current situation is bad for the trade unions, the current situation is wrong for the workers of South Africa, and the current situation needs desperate change. It can't continue on the basis that it is now. Now, what we do know is that prior to the fall of the nationalist government, uh, Kosato was um, part of the negotiations. They were certainly part of the fall of that government, and they were certainly part of forming um, an ANC government uh, that under President Mandela uh, where they tried to ensure that they could govern to the future. Now, unfortunately, um, post-President Mandela, it's become absolutely clear um, that the uh, ANC is unable to govern. But this is not something that's abnormal. 
It's not something that we haven't seen before. Uh, revolutionary movements have not been uh, steeped in being able to govern. Uh, they just can't do it. Uh, we've seen it throughout the world, not just here in South Africa, throughout the world, where revolutionary movements have tried to convert themselves into governing parties and it just hasn't worked. But over here, we can starkly see that. We can see that a trade union movement in partnership with uh, then, which was a revolutionary um, movement, the ANC, and they were good at being a revolutionary movement. They're certainly no good, absolutely useless at government, at governing. Uh, it, just, it just doesn't work. And I've been working with trade unions for many years, and what they're good at and what they should be good at trade unions is representing workers at the workplace, not letting politics meddle with them. And that's been the problem. This tripartite alliance has created a major problem. Just think about it. Government is the largest employer in South Africa. Government invariably is the largest employer in many countries around the world. Now, as soon as you have an alliance between the largest employer and the largest trade union body, You've got a problem because they are at loggerheads. The employer sometimes says we can't afford. The employee says you must pay. Now, if you can't come to an agreement, where does that lead you? That leads to institutional litigation. Sometimes strike action in South Africa, many times strike action. And unfortunately, that alliance has to break at some stage. It hasn't broken specifically because the ANC is unable to govern. So every time the trade unions make demands and they threaten that if you don't follow these demands and pay up, then we're not going to vote with you, we're not going to help you run elections, then the ANC crumbles. Now that doesn't make for good partners at all because the decision to pay the increase is not based on the fact that it's deserved, it's not based on the productivity, and it certainly is not based on affordability. Now we know that the ANC government signed a three-year agreement with Kasatu for a three-year increase each year. They were told up front that they couldn't afford it. The first year they paid the increase, much to the destruction of many parastatals. The second year they paid the increase, much to the destruction of many of the entities like ESCOM, SAA, I can go on, post office, all of them got destroyed. In the process, the country's being destroyed. And in the third year, they actually went to court and duplicitously cheated the trade unions over that third increase. The trade unions must understand that if the increase is unaffordable, somehow something's going to break. So what's broken, of course, is the country. The country is destroyed in the process. And the more that country is being destroyed, the less employment is going to happen. And then we've seen the destruction of the trade unions. It's not good for the trade unions to have lost jobs, almost 50% unemployment. Any trade union will tell you that they need to be able to trade and need to be able to create employment in a prosperous country. If the country is going downhill very fast, like we're seeing in South Africa, it's not good. Employment is disappearing. In essence, labor isn't working. We've seen that phrase many times before, but in South Africa, it's appropriate. Labor is not working. Their future members will not find jobs if it carries on like it is now. So what we really need now is we need a change in government. And I think every single employee in South Africa will understand that. Every single future employee who is looking for a job in the future will understand that you need a government that's going to ensure that South Africa grows economically and that South Africa creates jobs. And my only answer then is it can't be the ANC. It can't be business as usual. This is a, a, a party, a political party, a shadow of a political party that does not know how to govern. So yes, I'm calling for people to vote for the Democratic Alliance because that's why I think the best chance will be to grow the economy. We've seen that in the Western province. We've seen the Western province grow jobs. It's the only province that was able to do that. They created 98% of the jobs in the last two quarters. 
So the reality is, wake up. We need to change government. And the only way we're going to do this is where we're going to hold hands with the workers of South Africa, who are the backbone of our economy, to say, let's protect the economy. Let's get rid of the ANC. Let's look at a, a, an alliance of um, opposition parties and let's move forward. It's the only way we're going to do it. So thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram, Wednesday, the 3rd of May, 2023.